Hello there. Today I'm continuing my look at some wines from the Napa Valley, particularly from the Duckhorn Wine Company, and this is their 2019 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, Duckhorn are certainly more famous for the fact that they produce some fabulous Merlots. That's what they've made their reputation with since the, the winery was actually set up in 1976 by Dan and Margaret Duckhorn, and they produced their first vintage in 1978. But even at that first vintage, even though Merlot is what they've made their rep reputation with, half their production, 800 cases of wine, was Cabernet Sauvignon. The, eight other, the other 800 was Merlot. But, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon production has always been important to this winery. Since 1978, the winery's grown, and when Anne and Margaret sold in 2017, a private equity firm called TSG Consumer Partners, Duckhorn Vineyards had 400 hectares of their own estate vineyards. That's about a thousand acres. And as well as that, they also buy fruit from top growers in and around the Napa Valley area. Their own vineyards are in Howell Mountain and Yountville in the Napa Valley, and they also have, ho have holdings in both the Alexander Valley and the Russian River Valley. 2019 proved to be a, a really lovely vintage actually. It started out wet and damp conditions meant that the beginning of spring growth really took off very quickly. However there was a cool period and bud burst and flowering was quite late which actually pushed the season back a bit. In general temperatures throughout the summer were ideal. There were very few heat spikes. It was quite hot in July but it settled down a bit after that and, and then actually September was a beautiful, warm, but not too hot autumn that enabled the season to be sort of extended out and for the fruit to ripen very slowly. And what, what that meant was that there were lovely ripe tannins in the fruit. There were good aromatics and attractive fruit flavors. Now I don't have a breakdown of, of where the fruit for this wine came from, but we do know that uh, it's a blend of estate fruit and fruit from growers. And we know that the Cabernet Sauvignon has been softened a little to allow the style to age a little more quickly by the addition of a percentage of Merlot. The blend is 83% Cabernet Sauvignon with 13% of Merlot and then 4% each of Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot to make that up to the 100% there. And that's completely legal in US wine law. You can, you can have, I think it's up to 25% of other varieties and still name it as a single varietal wine. As far as fruit sources are concerned though, it's highly likely that the sources of fruit for this will range from cooler areas down in the south of Napa towards San Pablo Bay, places like Paneros and Oak Knoll, and then up to warmer areas in the north such as Calistoga or Yountville on the valley floor. And there's also likely to be slightly cooler climate fruit from the mountain sites such as Howell Mountain included in the blend. All of those are likely to be blended to create a harmonious wine. The wine aged in French oak barrels. The information I have doesn't say what size, but I would assume probably 225 litre barriques. And of those barrels, 50% were new and 50% were seasoned, had been used before. So we should be getting a fair amount of oak influence on the flavours and aromas of this wine. So let's see what we make of it, shall we? The wine is a deep, dark ruby red. I, looking at that, I really cannot see through it. It's opaque. There is a sort of a purple note to the rim, and given the fact that this is a five-year-old wine, I mean, that's still quite youthful. The wine, according to its label, has 14.5% alcohol, and it's tannic, and yes, it does form tears on the side of the glass, but it takes a while to do so. That's a, a, a viscous wine. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? There are some lovely classic Cabernet Sauvignon notes in there. You've got, first of all, you've got a, a sort of a black currantiness. There's a sort of a lifted, almost slightly black currant leaf note at the back there. And then you've got a richness of, of black plum sort of fruit. Ripe licoricey notes, real depth and concentration. But yet above that there are sort of slight minty hints, maybe a hint, a touch of eucalypt. There, this really is sort of running the spectrum of aromas that you'd expect from, to get from, from good Cabernet Sauvignon. So let's have a taste.
the fresh black currant notes are immediately apparent on the, the palate. There's a lovely, fine, grainy grip to the tannins. There are spices, there's almost a sort of a, a gingery note coming through. But there's still this lovely, juicy black currant through to bright black cherry sort of fruit on the front palate. But as you go through that, you, you get to a, it's a textural thing, actually. There's a lovely, smooth, licorice core to the wine that's that bit denser. Licorice-iness, there's the, the sort of the ripeness of black plum, almost getting to a slightly savoury note, sort of a touch of black olive. Then the freshness comes through again at the finish. There is the warmth of the alcohol rounding out the mid-palate. So there's a little bit of hotness and warmth, and that's where that sort of rich licorice comes to to the end of that sort of mid palette there and then you're left with more of a sort of a black cherry note on the finish black cherry and a bit of sort of maybe slightly toasty oak maybe slightly charred oak perhaps it's that sort of slightly bitter drying wood astringency coming through there it's coming through more as sort of smoke and graphite and that sort of thing and less as sort of sweet spices the oak is there but actually the the lovely juiciness the sort of the the blackberry the black cherry notes of the fruit are, are covering the oak very nicely and there really is a smooth texture the fruit is relatively one-dimensional actually I mean it's it's lovely it it, it, it has that sort of development from uh, black currant through to black cherry but currently it's not going much beyond that I suspect it will open more with a bit of time the structure is is quite fine it's reasonably supple. I mean, there was that initial graininess and some good grip at the beginning. By the finish, it's more smothered by the fruit. I suspect that may come out a bit with time as the fruit softens. And the finish is perhaps at the moment a little tight, a little closed and not as long as I would hope. Perhaps the alcohol is closing that up a little as well, I think. But yes, a wine that has an ability to age probably for five, six, eight, ten years. It has intensity and freshness that should keep that fruit vibrant for, for several years yet, offering some really nice, reliable drinking. What is, for a wine from the Napa Valley, some pretty good value for money. So thank you very much for watching the video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did like it, please press the button to say so. If you would like to follow us on, on YouTube and make sure you get the updates so that you know we're publishing new tastings, that would be fantastic. If you have any friends you think would like to watch the video as well please feel free to share it to them and if you want to know more about this wine where to purchase it its pricing there will be a link in the notes below to the page of wine search or website to, to help you with that there's plenty of information there most important do please try and make some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future won't you thanks again bye for now